Hello everyone, I'm Scott, president of Domino's Pizza. Have you heard of Hatsune Miku? Today I'd like to... This is Domino's app featuring Hatsune Miku, and for years I've considered it my favorite YouTube video of all time. If you've seen this video, you probably understand why I feel this way, and while I could sit here and describe all the things that make it special, the editing, the pacing, the extreme close-ups of Scott's face, I'd be doing it a disservice, and it's probably best if you just watch the whole video for yourself. So why then, in 2018, am I talking about a YouTube video that came out five years ago? Because late last year, completely out of nowhere, the video just disappeared, completely vanishing from YouTube search. This is the disappearance of Domino's app featuring Hatsune Miku. Now, this video is extremely important to me, and as soon as I noticed it had been taken offline, my mind began reeling. Nothing about taking this video down made any sense. My memory of the video was that it was immensely popular. I looked into it and discovered that I was right. Over its lifespan, the Domino's app featuring Miku commercial had accumulated over 1.3 million views. But for some reason, Domino's Pizza Japan had decided to unlist the video from YouTube, making it virtually impossible to find for anyone who didn't have the link already. Now to really put that number of 1.3 million views into perspective, let's look at some of the statistics. Over the years, Domino's Japan has uploaded dozens and dozens of videos, mostly commercials. A lot of the channel is just small adverts with only a couple hundred views, and then you've got a handful of commercials and music videos, most from the Miku era, with a decent number of views each. Here's a look at the top 10 videos of all time on Domino's Japan's channel sorted by views. In first place, there's Domino's app featuring Hatsune Miku, which completely dwarfs everything else Domino's Japan has ever done on YouTube. This video accounted for 72% of Domino's Japan's lifetime channel views. To put that another way, the Miku ad got more views than every other video Domino's Japan has ever uploaded combined. That is a staggering statistic. Objectively speaking, this video is the most successful thing that Domino's Japan ever did on YouTube or in internet video writ large, so it kind of begs the question, why did they remove the video? Where did it go? I began with a few theories. The first theory is also maybe the simplest, which is that as much attention as the Miku ad got online, it's possible that it simply wasn't the kind of attention that Domino's Japan was looking for. Yes, the video was insanely popular, but it was mostly popular with an international, largely English-speaking audience. So while the video was watched over 1.3 million times, the people watching it were, by and large, people outside of Domino's Japan's market, people who effectively had no buying power as far as Domino's Japan was concerned. It's not too much of a stretch to conclude that they were less than thrilled with this outcome. Now theory number two is a little bit more technical, and believe it or not, it has to do with Apple's latest major update to the iPhone's operating system. Last year, Apple released iOS 11, and an unfortunate side effect of that release was that it required Apple to discontinue support for hundreds and hundreds, if not thousands, of 32-bit applications. One of those applications? Domino's app featuring Miku, the very app that the original video intended to popularize. Now this theory to me seemed rock solid. Why would Domino's bother leaving up a video promoting an app that's no longer functional? And when I started to look at the timeline, even that began to line up iOS 11 was released September 19th, 2017, right around the time that the Miku video was unlisted from YouTube. This to me was a pretty satisfying answer, and I felt like the mystery was as close to being resolved as it was going to get. And while the video had been removed from the YouTube search results, anyone with the link could still watch it, so ultimately it wasn't that big of a deal that it had been unlisted. Then, in January 2018, something significant happened. I sat down with my morning cup of coffee and went to go watch the video just like I do every morning and saw this. The video was gone. Completely gone. Not just unlisted, but had been removed from YouTube entirely. And not only that, many of the mirrors of the video that had been re-uploaded by other YouTube users over the years also vanished overnight. The video had gone from unlisted to deleted. I double checked with friends in Japan to make sure that the video hadn't just been region locked and they confirmed the video was completely gone for everyone. Dismayed at the loss of one of my favorite pieces of internet content to ever be made, I went into full research mode and while looking into it I found irrefutable proof of the video's deletion. This date, January 13th, 2018, the day when overnight 1.3 million views went missing from Domino's Japan's YouTube channel. Unlisting the video was one thing, but to completely delete one of the most important YouTube videos of all time with no explanation was an unprecedented act of aggression from Domino's Japan, and one that deserved an answer. 
And for all the speculation I had done about where the video had gone, I came to realize that the only people with real, actual concrete answers about what happened to the Miku video were inside the walls of one very specific building. Domino's Japan Inc.'s Tokyo-based corporate headquarters, located in the Iwamoto Cho district in Tokyo's Chiyoda Ward. Running out of options and feeling really desperate for some sort of resolution, I knew what I had to do. So I booked a plane ticket and got on a flight to Tokyo in search of answers. I knew that if I were to go to Domino's Japan in person and explain what this video meant to so many people, they would have no choice but to put the video back online or at least give us some good answers. After arriving in Tokyo, I dropped off my things at my Airbnb and I began devising a plan. I knew that there was no way Domino's Japan would willingly allow me to film inside of their corporate headquarters, so what I decided to do instead was stick my phone in my shirt pocket and surreptitiously film the entire event. The next morning, I boarded the train to Domino's Japan headquarters with no real idea of what to expect. To be 100% honest, I was a little bit terrified. Would I even be able to find the building? And if I did manage to find it, would I even be able to get inside? If I did make it in the doors of Domino's HQ, how long would it be before I got thrown out? Or worse, was I about to be arrested in a foreign country for trespassing on private property owned by the most powerful pizza company in all of Japan? As I began to walk from the train station to where I thought the building was supposed to be, I started to feel more and more conspicuous. I was very visibly out of place. This neighborhood was almost entirely office buildings and the vast majority of other people on the street were salarymen on their way to work. This area was about as far as you could get in Tokyo from what you would consider a tourist neighborhood, and I felt so out of place that I began wondering if the stairs I felt like I was getting were imagined or real. Soon I arrived at what I was pretty sure was the correct place. Slowly I realized that the only way I would know for sure if this was Domino's headquarters was to risk it all and walk in the door. I was shaking with nervous energy, but I also knew that this would not work if I looked suspicious, and that the only way I'd be able to pull this off was if I pulled it together and acted confident and carried myself like I was supposed to be here. I had made it. I was in the belly of the beast and it looked like I had an elevator ride ahead of me. Before I could give myself a chance to think twice about it, I quickly turned the corner and boarded an already jam-packed elevator. After a long, quiet, and extremely tense elevator ride, the elevator finally stops at the fourth floor and I get off, along with a pair of Domino's Japan corporate employees. Once off the elevator, I took another small break to compose myself and take in my surroundings. I quickly survey the fourth floor and am disappointed to find only three things. A restroom, a sign with a Domino's logo on it, and a door with a keycard lock. There was no way I was getting in. Frustrated, I get back onto the elevator, this time alone, and I ride it up to the fifth floor, fully expecting to just encounter another locked door and the end of my search. The elevator arrives and I step off, and what I see next stops me dead in my tracks. A doorway opens up into an extravagant Domino's Pizza Japan reception area, every inch of it decorated in Domino's propaganda. The walls are lined with framed posters from various Domino's Japan promotions. To the left of me is a TV screen cycling through various commercials and statistics celebrating the various successes of Domino's Japan. To my right is a vintage Japanese Domino's Pizza delivery moped adorned with the original classic Domino's logo from the 1980s. But the most striking thing of all in this room is what's directly in front of me, and that's dozens and dozens of really beautiful flowers. As casually as possible, I inspect this whole area trying to figure out what these flowers are there for, and I discover that they're seemingly there to celebrate Japan's 500th Domino's location opening up. There's also one bouquet in particular that catches my eye because it has a man's name in English, a Mr. Josh Killamnik, which is a name that I had never encountered once in any of my research. For a second, it's all too much, and I briefly sit down on a nearby bench and try to take everything in. 
I realize that there is one last thing in this area, which is a locked door, much like the one on the fourth floor, leading into the Domino's Japan headquarters. And I realized that in spite of how far I had come both physically and emotionally on this journey, I had once again hit another major dead end. It began sinking in that I was no closer to the answers that I'd come all the way to Tokyo to get, and I was beginning to feel desperate. I started to feel truly helpless, and I began resigning myself to the fact that this was where this journey ended, and that I was never going to find the answers to the questions I had about why they took this video off YouTube. It's right around that time that I spot something that I had not noticed at first, which is a corded phone on the table in front of me, side by side with what appears to be a directory of employees of Domino's Japan. And my first thought upon seeing this is, what use is this to me? I don't, it's not like I know anybody inside of Domino's Japan, especially anyone who speaks English. And that's when I realized it. There was one person inside of Domino's Japan who I knew. One man who spoke English, who was fundamentally involved in the creation of this video, and who might have the answers I needed. So cautiously, I approach the phone, pick up the directory, look over each and every listing on there, and lo and behold, at the very bottom, extension 580, the CEO's office. I gulped and I thought about how it had happened that I had gotten to this point. I wondered in my head, was I really about to do this? Was I really about to pick up the phone and call Scott, president of Domino's Pizza? Could any of this, the risk, the money, the time spent, the energy, could any of this possibly be worth it to get to the bottom of where my favorite YouTube video had gone? Hi, uh, I'm a guest um, visiting uh, Mr. Olkers, uh, Scott, Scott Olkers. Is, is he here? Oh, okay. No, I, no, no, I, I didn't. I was, I was trying to, to say hello while I was in the country. Well, thank you so much. Bye. A bombshell. The king of dominoes was dead. In stunned silence, I set down the phone, turned around, and I walked out of Domino's Japan HQ. Outside, it had begun to rain. I opened my umbrella. At first, I wasn't really sure how to feel about what had just happened. I, I felt like my plan had failed, and that I hadn't been able to get a solid answer, and that I may never get a solid answer as to why the video went down. But then, walking down the street, rain hitting my umbrella, it dawned on me that that was the answer. Scott's retirement was the reason that they'd taken the commercial down. It, it explained everything. I mean, think about it. What's the first sentence out of Scott's mouth at the beginning of the Miku ad? Hello, everyone. I'm Scott, president of Domino's Pizza. President of Domino's Pizza. In hindsight, of course they had to take the video down. Scott had surrendered the title of president and CEO of Domino's Japan, and in doing that, he had rendered the entire video an inaccurate reflection of Domino's Japan as a corporation. They certainly couldn't leave the video up with a man who is no longer president claiming to be president of their company. Any corporation worth their salt would have no choice but to take the video down. This was it. This was the answer. For the first time in a long time, I smiled. This adventure no longer felt fruitless. I, I, the challenge was successfully carried out. I finally had the answer to where the best video on YouTube had disappeared to. And it was an answer I had to travel thousands of miles to get. That evening, I retired to my temporary apartment, satisfied by a job well done, and celebrated by ordering a Domino's pizza. And as I tracked my order in real time via GPS, met my jumpsuited delivery driver at the door, and then watched him speed away on his moped into the Tokyo rain, I thought about everything that had transpired that day. I thought about all the events that had led me to this point, about the video, about what made the video so special, about the internet and YouTube and what an incredible blessing it is to be alive at the same time as these things. I thought about Scott and I thought about Miku. And then the next day, I returned home to America. It wasn't until months later while working on this video and doing a little bit of auxiliary research that I dug a few things up. Scott had finally updated his LinkedIn, indicating his retirement from Domino's Japan. I thought back to that name I saw in the Domino's HQ lobby, Josh Kilimnik. I look into it and I discover that in January, the exact time frame that I visited them, Josh had just taken over for Scott as CEO of Domino's Japan. 
It turned out that that was what all those flowers were for, that they were a parting gift from other people who had all loved Scott just as much as I did, although for different reasons. These flowers were a show of appreciation for all the lives that Scott had touched in his time as president and CEO of Domino's Pizza Japan. It occurs to me that the time that I was there was probably Scott's last week as CEO of Domino's Japan. I had just barely missed him. Yes, I got the answer to the question of what had happened to the Domino's app featuring Hatsune Miku video, but more importantly, I got to be there. I got to walk the sacred halls that Scott had walked for over a decade. I got to be there on the advent of his retirement. And in a small way, in perhaps an invisible way, I got to celebrate with Scott. A career well-lived that I would never forget. Thank you, Scott. It takes courage to accept the challenge to make your dreams come true. Now that is a beautiful thing.